This appears to have been recorded um, secretly, discreetly. It appears we have some scenes from that incident where Erastus Asaridonko and his crew members. In fact, we have Erastus Asaridonko joining us on phone. Erastus, many thanks for joining us this morning on the AM show. What are we looking at on our screens right now? Well, I, I'm not close to a television set, but I guess looking at uh, uh, the exchange between the uh, uh, police and the people, the heavily built men who are spotted us. I have to ask you, how are you doing this morning? Well, um, physically I'm okay. Mm. And um, we are poised to start another day. But I have uh, some problems with my right eye. And mm. um, uh, it, it looks like there's a dark spot on it. Uh, I showed it to the doctors yesterday at a group, and they said to you, um, so it's another aspect of analysis. So we are honoring an invitation from the uh, police, mm. and after that we will get a doctor to look at. You have you have an issue with your right eye, and you see a dark spot on it. Why does this? <laughs> it's just reminiscent of what our very own Latif went through at a point, and he's still you know, suffering from that. But can you just walk us through, walk us through what exactly happened from start to finish? You may not be watching the visuals now, but what happened? Walk us yeah, through what so happened. I'm, I'm watching the visuals now, okay. and what you're seeing now on TV uh, is when, after our reporter, the police, they sent the task force together with us to uh, the uh, uh, site, the mining site, again, uh, to identify the people. And so you could see those in your top, those who are sorted out, uh, at least majority of them are here, and you can see them exchanging uh, words with the police. This was when they asked them to get onto the vehicle, and they said no, they won't get onto the vehicle. Uh, they have to talk to their people. And they, they, what you're seeing now, the guy with a black hat was saying that, we are not buying, you're buying the water, you I see. That guy, they, in a, in a white t-shirt uh, with, with his back facing us. He was saying, you're buying a water in the near penny area to which uh, our government is in power and we do what we want. So we won't go, we won't come with you. And it ended there, right? The police were not able to arrest any of the guys you are seeing uh, in your shops at the moment. But these are the people who uh, took us for things, drove us for minutes and assaulted us in the bush. Erastus, what explanation did the police give you for their failure to arrest these people who clearly had assaulted you? Well, they told us that um, they, they feel that they were outnumbered and they had to regroup and come back. What about the other members of your crew? How are they faring this morning? So I called the drone guy. He has um, a hearing problem in the left ear. Mm. So I've asked him to get a test with the Confederate System Hospital. But the other two, um, Eddie and Nicholas, the driver and the camera technician, they are okay. The, the whole bit about the way the police reacted or those security officials you had on the scene, how did that make you feel? Mm. Seriously, it makes me feel helpless. Helpless? Be yes, because... Um, I felt that we had eight armed policemen and they could do something. They could at least arrest some of them. But when we went there, and they couldn't. And the, the people felt that they were more powerful than the police. At the point, they were even uh, you know, exchanging words with them. It, it makes me feel helpless as a, as a, as a civilian. Sure. Why did you think the police could not effect any arrest? Why did you think the police could not? Because they are clothed with the power of the law, even the power of force, depending on the situation. And yet, these people beat you guys up, and the police was unable to do anything. Why do you think that was? In fact, two main things ran through my mind. Listening to them, and at a point, it became more of a conversation between them. One... It's either they know them, uh, they are familiar with them, mm. 
Um, that, that was the conversation. At a point, they were conversing. They called them to a point. They stand there. They were chatting with them. Uh, you know, more like pleading with them to come with them to the police. Mm. And to, perhaps they know whoever is behind those people is more powerful than them. And they, they feel the consequences. And that's why they... And again, the third one, if I should ask, is that I feel they also felt outnumbered because they, the people were many. And so they felt that doing an arrest at that particular point would cause chaos, and they need to regroup and come back. So All these three, I think, is possible. Outnumbered, but outgunned as well. We also saw some of these people. You see someone decked in uh, an attire that resembles the American flag, and he's wielding a gun. I don't know whether and you that, remember that that, that, that. that one was a policeman. He was a police officer. Okay. Yes, but, but, but I also hear... But you, you see that the other guys, when they came, when we met them at the site, they had gone to dump their guns. Mm -hmm. And so they came on arms. Okay. So they had guns, but they had gone to dump them. All of them had guns. All of them had compacting guns. All of them. I see. And the police was aware that they had guns. And we told them, but when they came back to meet the police at the site, they had dropped the gun. So was this after the beating or before? This was after, this right? This was after the beating, mm. when we had gone to report the case to the police, and they gave us the task force you see in the video, all armed, about eight officers armed, to come back to the site to identify the men. Erastus, so the I one in red... Mm. And this one in your shot, they are all police officers. Let me ask you, what exactly, I mean, we've seen the footage and everything. What exactly did these people do to you and, and the other men? I want you to reiterate. What did they do? Well, I want so specifics. They, 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 well, they accosted us and I would say they arrested us. Because then they took hold of everything we had. They, they, they ran a body set on each of us, took our food, took everything we had in our pocket. The drone, the camera, and everything. And then forced us into our own vehicle because one of the armed men sat behind the driver and asked him to follow their vehicle. And so we followed their vehicle. We were flanked by motorcycles with, with all of them armed. To a vehicle behind us with armed people, a vehicle ahead of us who so we were sandwiched in between. And they said we we're going to the next town. When we reached the next town, they bypassed the next town and was going into the bush. So I got scared and asked them, where are you taking us? They wouldn't tell us. They said, if the driver will not drive, they will force him out and bring their driver to drive the vehicle. And this was at a gunpoint. So I had to tell the driver to cooperate, go with them. So we followed them. We drove for about another 20 minutes. We reached a secluded uh, forest area, and then they asked us to get down. That was where I got scared, because when you say we could get down, are you going to shoot us? What are you going to do? So I was trying to find out from the, the gentleman, and then I received two hot flags that I was asking stupid questions. I could get out. So I got out. Can then you identify the one who slapped you? Apple so they, they, they format my phone. I said, why would you want to format my phone? He said, I'm taking pictures of the mining site. And so they want to delete it. I said, fine. If you want to delete the, the pictures I've taken, which is unlawful, but I will still open the phone for you to do that. But to say you are formatting my phone and clearing everything, that one, I disagree. So at this point, I got another two hot slaps from behind. Who, who was this person slapping you? Do you know? Everybody. One will come and slap you. The other one will come and punch you in the face. Just like that. Erasto, did they know you were coming? You, you're from the multimedia group. Did they know who you they, were? They, they knew we, had, we went there with a branded vehicle. Our jackets were branded. We joined you. They asked of our name and our designation. We gave it to them. They knew who we were. They even, at a point, removed the joint use jacket for me. And until now, I still don't have it. It's with them. 
Mm. Wow. How, I mean, these things are always at a point you realize that anything could have happened. Your life could have been taken by these gentlemen. You were afraid for your life and that of your crew. How has that impacted you? How has that traumatized you? In fact, it's scary to think that just by doing your job, you could fall into that near uh, death experience. And when they, got, they asked us to get down, that was, you know, it was like they were going to shoot us, uh, gun us down. So that was what was going through my mind. And I wouldn't want to get out of the vehicle. And I kept asking them what they were going to do. And I think that infuriated them. But at the end of it all, they took the, uh, uh, the SD card from the drone, from the camera. I think their motive was to prevent whatever they were doing on that mining site, which was totally criminal and evil, from going out. And so they took the SD card, they formatted some of our phones, they deleted some from my uh, phone as well. They, but what is important is that they took the drone battery, five of them. It was in a bag with, with a, a Lenovo tablet, which we used to run the drone. These are expensive tools that we use, and until now, we don't have them. Hmm. Erasmus, how has this impacted your activism against illegal mining? It hasn't changed anything. What we think is that we have to revise our security protocol. But to bring to form what is killing all of us. Mm. That one to us is a gift. Thank you so much for sharing this experience with us. And we are so sorry that this happened to you in just doing your job, like you say, a near death experience. Do, Thank you, do, you so much, do, do you know the Erastas Haridonko, a former GJA? Uh, well, you know, journalist of the year, and current, this is how this is how DJ, he's treated. This is this he's is a Ghana current for winner for fight against yes. illegal mining. Well, let's let's bring in Dr. Ken Ashibe. Uh, he's with the Media Coalition Against Galamsey. Ken, good morning. Good morning, sir. On the back of this happening, very briefly, what is your takeaway, and uh, what do you think should be the way forward? Police officers were there; nothing could be done. Well, I've just been told by uh, Kojo that apparently Evans all got intervened and got the IGP involved. And so when the team, uh, the IGP ordered for the team to go, they were outnumbered by these criminals. And, you know, so they had to retreat and that the police are going to be dealing with them. But this is the reason why we need a state of emergency declared. So that people like this, criminal minds like this, who could immediately start terrorizing people are dealt with. It is important that today, uh, you know, all of us, you know, well-minded Ghanaians, so are abhorrent to this, and we take the next three steps to ensure people are put behind special forces uh, that have been set up for uh, dealing with galaxy, and these people are prosecuted, and we ensure that the maximum sentence is has brought to bear on the various crimes, the vigilante uh, law, uh, the issues of the minerals and mining assets amended, uh, you know, attacks on journalists, all of that, because this is completely unacceptable. That we sit in a country where we all say, you know, you should have listened to what the uh, program on BBC, that was denigrating us as a country, disgracing us because of the very disgraceful way in which we're dealing with this. And then we have people who just think that because their government is in power, they have the power to, you know, when the police go, uh, inviting them, they, they can decide that they won't go. You know, what licenses do you have in carrying those weapons that they, they are carrying? And it is important that beyond the, the, the criminal action that will be brought, multimedia and all, you know, various organizations get involved and will bring a, a civil action against whoever these people are. Their licenses ought to be revoked. It's a board member, the, 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 all of them who are involved in this criminal uh, enterprise. We need to deal with them. And it's important that we speak up and say for that. And I pray, I pray it, of course, the fact this is the reason why we are asking for a safe decision. This is what I think so far, that as far as people give up, absolutely, fully are unable for it. The only way you can deal with this 
It's a state of emergency. Right. And also, a nice labor who has supposed to find a suspended life to take up the system as part of the issue of state that they are waiting for dealing with that state of emergency. Um, Kanashigwe, unfortunately, we, you're breaking up, but thank you so much.